once I, I had a nightmare about myself. I saw myself walking into a room, feeling that I'm looking for someone I love that I dearly miss. I was walking into this room and seeing how empty it is, wondering whether I will see that person or not. I was very hesitant about my excitement and very ready to be disappointed. And as soon as I started, as soon as I started to lose my hope that I would see someone, something moved on my left side. And with the love and passion and the excitement of seeing someone you love, I turn around to be shocked. A monster was standing in front of me. And out of fear, I just pushed my hand, trying to kill it. So it pushes its hand, trying to kill me. It had the same level of passion to erase me from existence. Just a second later, I realized it was moving exactly the same way I'm moving, but in reverse. So when I move my right hand towards it, it moves its left hand towards me. And when I, when I move my left hand, it moves its right hand. And it just takes you one second to realize something different. When you exactly believe it cannot be worse. Now let me take you to the days before the nightmare. My reality was far, far, far beyond. More painful than the nightmare I was having. I was put in a crowded cell. In a prison cell, even though I never committed any crime, my beloved ones were dying, one by one, in front of my eyes. And I only had one wish, I only had one dream. I wanted to eat once, be full, and die. Because I was hungry. Because I was starved. I was starved to the level where I could think about nothing but food. I could imagine nothing but food. They starved us to the level where they give you so little that you can barely survive. And on top of all of that, they take you to the torture every single day. I was so much in pain. They torture you until the level where I felt like there's so many parts of my body that I can't even feel. Left with hunger, starvation, and pain, I had one tiny hope, that a hero that I never know the shape of or the name of would come at some point and save me. But what hero would come through these dark cells, through the, these dark doors? Midday on a Tuesday, midsummer, the guards come into the corridor, they shout my name, they take me to another room in preparation for execution. The guns are loaded, they aim at your head. The end is so close that you cannot imagine the details of it. <laughs> They shot, and I died for the first time in my life. I never died before. Nobody tell, told me how it feels to die or what happens after you die. So I died. I died enough to the level where I woke up and met a person who told me, now you have been smuggled out of prison. You are free. What helped you? be smuggled is your ugly look, your skin body, and the fact that you're sick. And now, I'm taking you to meet your mother. Suddenly, I see myself walking into a room with a feeling that I'm going to see someone I love that I dearly miss. 
I don't know whether I will see that one in the room or not, because the room is so empty. So I, yeah, very hesitant about my excitement and very ready to be disappointed. So as soon as I lose all the hope I have, something on my left side moves. So with the feeling of love and excitement, I turn around to see in front of me the hero that saved my life. That bloody, scary, ugly monster was the hero that I waited for for a very long time. My broken body that allowed me to be smuggled out of prison. So today, when I stand in front of a mirror, I, I see a smiling guy. I see a handsome guy, indeed. <laughs> and on top of that, I see a hero that I feel very proud of. So if I'm going to conclude that to you today, what I would say is that when you are in the worst days of your life, when you're standing in front of the mirror, and there's no way you could see anything but a monster, a disturbing, ugly, scary, bloody monster, you have to remember one tiny thing. This monster is the foundation for the kind, smart hero you will be at some point. Thank you.